here we are again in the final section of the game. Hopefully I'll be able to finish this in one video, but to keep you in sus suspense for a while longer, I thought I'd go back and show a couple of things I didn't do earlier. Now, back to the museum. Well, there's this Zulu spear and shield which you can hold uh, build together and supposedly this combination would provide prove to be a very good weapon against those uh, thing demons with bat wings in the second basement. <coughs> but they didn't seem too bad with just the katana. Then we have the demon mask and here is the plaque. Don't remember where I got that from anymore. But yeah, you can take the mask, wear it on your head. No, won't by samurai to scare the enemies and bolster their own spirits. Yeah, that description seems to suggest that it could be used to enhance fighting eff efficiency. But I haven't noticed much of a difference with it. I prefer the circlet. And for one more thing, we'll go back to the mausoleum. And in here. Now, ah, just something off. And here we have a uh, some kind of altar room. Stone altar, evil black hello candles and an organ the music stand and quite obviously you can use the sheet of music what was it anyway mm. well, sheet of music on it and the window shadows revealing another entrance to the ethereal plane oh, just thought I'd show that off and now we shall return to our regular programming. Oops. Now, this place is riddled with these mobile teleporters, which can be annoying. Bump into one, or one catches up to you, and they'll toss you back to the ethereal plane. For another annoyance, this place has fire spawns. We don't have the fire extinguisher anymore, but the spirited katana works pretty well against them. Now I put my crystal glasses on back there. There are a few, well, additional teleporters in this area, well, which you can't see, but step into the wrong place and you'll be teleported to another section of the uh, astral plane. Well, you can finish this without the glasses. Without them you'll just have to make a bit of a detour. Okay, let's see. Go back this way because that combat took a bit of time. <coughs> Hmm. Right. right over here we have the reason we need the Eye of Agla. Can't pass beyond this point without wearing it, holding it in your hand. Now just put the katana back. There. Oh, another one of you. And there you go. And this is the direction we need to be heading. Absolutely nothing in this southwest part of the level except one of those places where you would be teleported to. Damn. So 
those things are really mauling me here. I haven't, I haven't done this badly in a while. Now, now looks like there's nothing here, right? Wrong. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, it does look like it. But there is something here. For you see, right past. Let's to the north of here. Is the final enemy. But we'll be loading and trying again since we need to make some preparations. Okay, the circle goes on. Bye bye, Katana. That thing can only be harmed with magic. Ah, then we have a bit of uh, experience to spend. You know, I really like this kind of experience system. You know, you only get experience from certain pretty I mean, quest things and there are no actual experience levels. It nicely en eliminates grinding and leveling. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines used a similar system, which I Honestly, I think that may be the best experience system I've ever seen in a computer role-playing game. But, enough of me rambling now. You can prepare a spell to a higher level. And as I understand, then you'll automatically cast it on that level with the left click. Okay, Elixir of Health and Flames of Desolation. Yeah, it uses up a bit of mana or magic energy or whatever and you can let's restore that by meditation just because I'm such an emotional sucker I want to take the katana with us because this is the end of the game by dawn just save again here and now we'll just Go there and wail this guy with spells. And heal every now and then, and that's it. Honestly. A bit of an anti climax, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I think I would prefer if there was some kind of final uh, puzzle like ritual to get rid of him. No, something similar to the end of Sweet Home, but. Well, I still like this game, and now the ending. Now you can't can't make it out very well even uh, in this full screen, but well, before that place got destroyed, the window broke at the corner closest to the screen, and apparently our character got out there. The window pouch is destroyed. We sell the land for redevelopment for night quite a nice sum I guess and leave on a world cruise. And that is our happy ending. Yeah, that's it then. Notice it says it makes the file winner that enough. Possibly for importing a character to a potential sequel which never came to be. Anyway, this has been Crowley with Let's Play The Legacy Realm of Terror. Next time, some other game.